What is up? Welcome to Every Single Guitars, where the goal of this channel is to review every single guitar ever made. I have a cool, cool vintage Epiphone electric guitar. This is an early or mid 70s Epiphone ET290N. I'm assuming N stands for natural. So when I saw this on the ad, the pictures are really bad. It was only one photo and a very blurry photo of just the front. So I couldn't really tell what the condition was, but you know, I've never seen this particular Epiphone in my life. I knew that it's an early 70s or 70s Japanese made Epiphone that I've never seen. With a maple neck, it had to be something unique. So when I saw the guitar in person, I noticed that it was in pretty dirty condition. It was very used. You know, structurally, the guitar is very solid. It's very sound, but there was a lot of dust. Fretboard was really dirty. Um, there's a lot of like muck that you can kind of call, which is common on uh, maple fretboards. The neck, ouch, damn. I just cut myself with the string, dude. Fucking bleeding. Damn, I was so excited to review this. I cut my fucking finger, dude. I gotta use this as a band-aid. Anyways, the, the headstock area was pretty dirty. Everything on the outside was pretty dirty, but you know, I've held and inspected and played enough guitars to know despite how dirty it is or the aesthetics looking bad, if the guitar is still good, you know? And like I said, structurally, apart from like the dirtiness that could be easily cleaned off, the guitar was very good. However, one thing that I did notice was there is a lot of fret wear on this guitar. When I got this guitar, the strings were really old, so I couldn't really play it but the strings were really, really low, really low action. And I thought that it was because it was just set up that way, but I realized that it was because of the fret wear. To be honest, I never really understood what fret wear was until I've seen this guitar. Like this, literally the metal frets are pretty close to the fretboard. And now I understand what fret wear is, it's just, a lot of wear on the frets. You know, I thought it was surprising that this is the first guitar that I've actually seen true fret wear because I've held and played guitars much older than, you know, in early 70s. But this, I can tell, has been clearly played a tremendous amount. So right now, I cleaned up the guitar completely. I completely disassembled it. And this is actually the first guitar that I've disassembled completely. I took off the neck, I took off the pickguard, I took off the knobs. I took off the bridge and the saddle. I took off the pickguard. I took off the tuners. I took off the truss rod cover. I basically took off every single part of this guitar to see how it was constructed. Dude, inside, once you take off the screws and you lift up the pickguard, dude, this guitar was the cleanest I've seen electronically. I mean, I actually took a video um, of me when the guitar was um, disassembled, so I'll post that right here. Dude, this guitar is just so well made. I'm not a big guitar, you know, fixer. You know, I've been kind of doing setups recently myself, just learning it on the spot, but I don't have much knowledge when it comes to fixing guitars. But what I did notice is this guitar is made that even the beginner can understand how it's done. I don't know if it's just because of this specific model or if it's because of it's made in Japan, but dude, it was made so efficiently. It was made so well. Um, the electronics, the wires are very clean. They're very neatly um, aligned. The soldering was done very well. The neck quality is so good on this guitar. I reviewed a couple Japanese made uh, guitars in my channel. The common theme that I explained in all the Japanese made guitars I've played is the neck. This is a U-neck. My Japanese Tele was a U-neck. My Jag Stain by Kurt Cobain was a U-neck. My Fender Stratocaster made in Japan was also a U-neck type of feel. So I don't know if a U-neck is like a Japanese thing, um, or maybe I've been just getting the ones that are U-necks, but dude, this neck is so comfortable to play on. I can tell it's not a V, obviously, because there's no sharp thing in the middle that you feel on the back. It's not like a rounded C or like a chunky C, like a Fender or like an SG. This is like a, U, a wide U. It's like this way it's long, but this way it's kind of slim. So it's super comfortable to play, very nice. So when I disassembled the guitar, I inspected and looked at every part of this guitar. I noticed that for the bridge and the saddle, dude, this, the construction of the metal on this is such high quality. Even though you can't see it from here, if you take off the saddle and you look underneath, it actually says 
uh, made in Japan or crafted in Japan on both of it, um, which I thought was really cool. These tuners, I don't think these are original tuners because I see uh, tuning holes, but I'm pretty sure that these are old tuners, at least from the 70s or 80s. It says made in Germany with an S type shape. So I'm assuming these are shallower, but regardless, these tuners are very high quality. Um, I actually like the look of these tuners on this guitar. It looks really nice, even though I like everything all original. I could clearly tell that she bought this guitar originally to keep for life because, you know, she has stuff engraved on the back. She played this thing like hell. She clearly loved this guitar and really liked playing it because you can just see this guitar just has so much character, dude. It looks so nice. The hardware is all gold originally, but because of the wear and play over the years, the gold has kind of turned into like a metal uh, silverish color, but you can still see parts of the original gold, which I think is very nice. Usually my biggest gripe with uh, Japanese uh, made guitars is the neck quality and the hardware, everything is usually really good. Usually the neck and the finish of the guitar is really well done for Japanese guitars. And that is the same case as this, but usually sometimes Japanese guitars lack the electronics when it comes to the quality of the pickups. But dude, these pickups sound so good. I don't know what pickups these are. If you can see from here, there's only one string attached. I only have the G string attached and it's because I was cleaning it up and I was setting up the action. So I'm just trying to you know, figure out how to balance the action height. So I've been just playing around with one string, but still, Dude, even with one string, I could clearly tell that this hump, these pickups, these humbucking pickups sound very, very good. And I'll show you how this guitar sounds with one string. <laughs> I mean, I can't really do a full tone test with one string, you know, but you can kind of tell it just sounds very smooth, very clean. Another reason why I wanted to pick this guitar up is because, like I mentioned in the beginning, I've never seen this guitar ever. I always thought that Epiphones were kind of like a squire of guitars, kind of like, you know, a lesser, more affordable version of a Gibson. So, you know, if a Gibson has the Les Paul Custom or the Les Paul Standard or the SG, you know, Epiphone releases the same exact model, but with, you know, cheaper parts and a different uh, headstock, headstock logo to make it a more affordable for the general public. But for this guitar, I've never seen this Epiphone model ever, this design. This doesn't even look like a standard Gibson design in my opinion. Even though these knobs and these humbuckings kind of reminds you of a Gibson, the entire body shape, you know, it looks very unique. It looks completely different from an, a Gibson. Usually Epiphones, you know, they have like the Casino, which looks very similar to a ES335, but this is just a completely unique design by Epiphone, and I thought that that was very cool. And I'm wondering why they don't release this type of model again, because to me, like from a design standpoint, this guitar looks very, very nice. It's just very well done with a very slim body, kind of like an SG. Dude, overall, just from a quality standpoint, in terms of the sound quality and the build quality, dude, I'd give this an 8.5 which is very, very high for a Japanese made guitar. The tone, it sounds very good, but like I said, I haven't set up the entire guitar yet and I've been only playing it with one string. So you can't really tell the tone completely just by playing with one string, but even with the one string, this guitar sounds very, very good. I can tell that if this guitar is properly set up, it will sound incredible. Early 1970s, Epiphone ET290N. Very, very good guitar. I am very blessed to even found this guitar because I cannot find much information on this online. I couldn't even find much YouTube videos on this 
on the specific model and the color. But if you guys know more about this guitar, write it in the comments below so that we can all appreciate the knowledge of this guitar. Very nice.